Hey guys, it's Colin here. Now one of the top priorities that every reptile or any animal keeper from beginner to very experienced, the number one thing on all of your minds is mites and how can I keep my animals safe from them because they can be serious and you want to stay clean. In this video I'm just going to discuss what they are and just how to get rid of them. Welcome to Classy Herbs. All right, now to start off, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, so what is a mite? All right, so a mite is just, it's a little bug most of the time that uh, it, it stays on the skin of your animal. I don't actually have any mites right now. Uh, I have dealt with them before. Another thing you guys should definitely know is that this is really scary to a lot of people. It's that mites are most of the time species specific. So if your snake has mites, then don't worry that they're gonna infect you you because they don't infect humans they can only live off of your snake's blood so don't worry about that now mites will uh, infest your snake's body or any reptile or any animal really they'll start small and then they will eventually if not treated take over your animal's body a good place to check is right around the eyes because that's a tender area and then definitely right around the neck but you can see them between the scales and everywhere just they look like little black dots they look like pepper and so a good way to tell is to just let your snake slide along a, a white surface or a piece of paper and if it begins to have like a peppered effect on the white surface because the mites are usually black or a reddish color that you can be sure that you have mites and they will be moving around a little bit but you can definitely see if you look between the scales carefully enough that if your snake has mites you'll be able to see a little bulge of the scales bulging out now the life of these mites is they somehow got onto your snake uh, you could have brought them home from a reptile expo or you brought home a new animal from a pet store and it had it and they can infest your whole entire population or your whole collection of animals very quickly because they spread very quickly. Now I'm going to tell you how this happened. So usually adult mites come home on your snake and then they feed off of your snake until they are mature enough to lay eggs. The mites usually have to come off of the snake and into the bedding to lay these eggs and then when they hatch the larvae of these mites are, um, are basically dust. You can't even see them really. So these mites just kind of come off and they're transported through the air. And this is how you can see one of them all this poofs up and they lay hundreds of eggs. And it, it can easily spread to one of your snakes and then one mite can just lay eggs and it can just take over like crazy. A, a small amount of mites on your animal isn't going to really hurt them. It can probably be annoying. It might cause them to stop eating or something. But if you don't take care of it they will continue to populate and eventually they will infest your animal so badly that it could kill them. The mites don't exactly kill them from sucking blood. The way they kill is from transporting a new disease into your animal and causing them to die of something else. So what I've just told you can sound pretty scary and sound pretty helpless because they're so small you can hardly see them with the naked human eye and so you don't really know and every animal is at risk for this so you're wondering wow how do I stop this this sounds horrible alright so luckily there's a few companies that make things to uh, stop this here's my favorite it's called prevent a mite it's pretty self-explanatory it kills mites and takes the feet on snakes and tortoises and uh, yeah your reptiles and stuff so it, this is basically just a, an aerosol spray in this bottle here and a lid comes off and then what you want to do with this is I do this uh, once a month at the beginning of the month every month and it's basically just an insect repellent very strong it's like what you would like spray in your yard to kill insects just a little less because you don't want to kill your animals uh, you definitely don't want to do this in a not very ventilated room because if you have insects like my scorpions or my tarantula here they are also insects and this will kill them so don't ever spray their cages but over here I'm safe to do it there's plenty of ventilation in this room and then every month I will just come along and give it one little spray and in each slot just like this and this bottle's about out, I need to get some more. But uh, yeah, you see I just put a little spray in front of each tub. I'll go along and do that once a month. And doing that will hopefully stop the cycle. You can't exactly stop the mites that are originally on your snake. You just have to wait for them to lay their eggs. And then once they lay their eggs, they usually die. So you have to stop the cycle from there. You can't let it get started again. So 
you just have to stop the larvae from spreading to the other snakes and starting anew again. Please don't ever spray this Prevenomite on your animals because that can be very harmful to them. And if you're using a tank, take the animal out, take the water bowl out, spray down the cage really good and wait like a half an hour to an hour. Empty out the water bowl, give it new water and put the animal back in. Be sure to let it air out a little bit because this can be harmful to the animal. It's pretty strong stuff but not in tubs if you just give it one little spray. You can change out the water so it doesn't infect them anyway. But if your animal does have a very severe case of mites and you're really worried about it, or if you just want to give it a little extra attention, there's this. It's called reptile spray. It's pretty natural. Um, it kills mites on reptiles. It's just a little spray. You can just spray the animal down. This snake doesn't actually have mites, but I'm showing you. It's just a liquid. You spray it down. You can rub it around on them. And then, uh, yeah, just let them be. And that, it's a bug killer, so just let that be. You can also spray that in a cage and then wipe it down and yeah that that'll be good. Another thing I need to mention with the Prevenomite, don't take everything out of the cage to do that because then you're taking out every, all the bugs in it and that doesn't really do much. So you need to spray that in with everything to kill all of them. This is remember I said they lay their eggs in the substrate and that's what you need to kill. You can't really kill the mites too easy but you need to stop the cycle. Okay another great thing to do to treat mites is to give your snake a bath. Now a lot of times they don't really like it so you gotta kind of put them in or just put a lid on it. Okay and make sure you put air holes in the sides there. Put the lid on and then you can watch your snake. Put them in there for about half an hour to an hour and just let them soak. A lot of people believe that it's good to just make really shallow baths where it's barely covering their body. I don't believe in that at all, at least for this reason, because this is to drown the mites right off their skin. Because the mites still have to breathe even though they're drinking the snake's blood, they still have to breathe though. And so if you put them underwater, well, they can't breathe and they drown and they die off. And if your snake has mites, you'll be able to see them start floating up to the surface. Just let them soak in there for a long time. And also, a good soak is always good for your snake. And it, it always helps their skin it help rehydrate and everything. That's a good tip if you're really concerned, new pet owner, about your snake. And you want to get the mites off them really fast. And then if you want to be sure you're doing everything you absolutely possibly can, this betadine stuff that they use in hospitals, it's an extreme sanitizer. It's like Germax, but you know, to the extreme level. It's yellow, it stains stuff, so be careful. What you're going to use that for is after these mites fall off, they're going to leave open wounds on your snake. And those can get infected. There's a chance of it at least. And that betadine is just going to go over there and clean that out. You can just keep reapplying that until you feel comfortable. You don't even really have to do this, but it'll keep infection chances down and your snake will be a little happier, I'm sure. Alright, so to summarize, the best way to kill mites is to prevent mites. Don't ever even let it get started. Keep your cages clean. Don't let poop sit in there for weeks because that heat can attract mites really quickly. Uh, just keep everything sanitary the best you can. Keep your animals clean, healthy. Don't give the mites a chance to even get started because if you do, they will attack. Okay guys, I'm out here in the rat shed and I just came out here and I stumbled across his mom was giving birth right here. She's about halfway done. That's not the reason I came out here. There's another type of mites, the ones I was just talking about inside that are the most common type of mites are called exoparasites. And there's so many different kinds of species of parasites, but the ones that are on the outside of the snake are called exoparasites. There's also another kind of parasite that's much, much more severe and can cause a lot more problems, and those are the endoparasites, the ones that live on the inside of your animal. Those are like tapeworms and things that live inside of your animal that suck them to death. I have actually had a, a bit of an infestation out here in my rat colony of endoparasites. I'm not sure what kind they are. We're taking them to a college to have some studies done. But I had some weaned rats lately have, this is all that's left of what's hit me. Very quickly, their minds just were gone and all they could do were flips on the ground and they had no idea what was going on and it was horrible. It took about three days to kill them and then finally I was like what is going on here and I realized it was more than just something just something and so I figured it was contagious so I brought one in that was close to death just barely breathing and I, I watched it and just just as it died all these 
like worms came out of its skin, thousands of them all over. And uh, I had never noticed them before, so that they were bright red. That tells me that they were on the inside of the animal because there's no way I could have missed that if they were on the outside before. Those are internal parasites. And they come out of the animal after they've killed its host to find a new host. Lucky for me, they are also species specific, so they can't spread to me. They can only spread to other rats. And that's a problem because out here it's pretty close quarters and everyone's pretty much bunched together. If one of them gets it, it's super, super easy to spread to the others. I had like 20 rats and I have left three. That hit me in about a week. It was really sad because all the rat can do is just spin in circles and suck for air. It's really sad. It hits them super fast. Yesterday something rather sad happened to me. This pregnant mother, it was the first rat that I have ever raised up from a baby myself and um, to breed and she was going into labor just as I walked in she laid down and she died right there her, her body was still warm I could see the babies moving in here she's going to give birth but she just could not do it and so I I'm going to be a vet I hope when I grow up and so this really interested me I went ahead and I tried I attempted to give it a c-section to cut the babies out of her to save them because it looked like she's gonna have a very large litter Unfortunately, the babies had already died inside of her. Kind of a sad situation. External parasites, it's kind of like compared to a tick. Like a tick, one, or a lot, it's really hard for them to literally suck you to death to where you have no more blood. But the way a tick can kill you is because they can spread, if you ever heard of it, like Lyme disease. And that can kill you, just one can spread that into you because the tick carries it. That, that's how an external parasite can kill your animal. Alright, so this is going to be the pup of the week. This is a little baby. Hasn't even opened its eyes yet, but it's a survivor. Its litter somehow, all the babies had these big cuts on them. And see, it's got some on its belly still on its back. All of them had it. They were pretty severe. This is your pup of the week. And one last thing guys, I made a new account, it's called Classy Herps, which is what I call my videos here. I just thought I'd make that because, you know, the Reptivian Kid thing, it's kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really go along with the whole Classy Herps thing, because like, people are like, well, who's Reptivian Kid, what's Classy Herps and all that, so it's kind of confusing. So I just figured I'd just change it all. I'll put a link thing right here, click on that, go to that, subscribe to that page. I have all my Classy Herps videos up there, so I'm just going to start fresh. Yeah, please uh, subscribe to that, and when I hit 200 subscribers on that channel, I will then stop uploading videos to the Reptibian Kid. They'll still be there, but I'm going to only upload videos to Classy Herps once a week, every Monday, like usual. So please, let's get going on this, and uh, please go over there and subscribe to that. I will be uploading all my videos there also, and soon enough, only to there. It's time for the weekly comment contest. So surely by now you've heard about the cobra that escaped the Bronx Zoo. So this week's comment contest question is, do you think everyone overreacted to an escape like this, or is all the panic in this area necessary? Why? Please leave a comment down below for a shout out next Monday. Last week's comment contest question, which was how did you convince your parents to allow you to keep reptiles in our amphibians? Is best answered by Killer12227, who said, I convinced my parents by researching, I made a PowerPoint about everything about them, made enough money to buy the animal in the cage, spent time warming reptiles up for my parents in Viola, smiling face. But my snake was a challenge. Extra smiling face. Just got a Kenyan and convinced my parents that it was harmless. After that, I could get it. Also, a big factor to my parents was food for a snake. They thought I had to feed live mice and stuff like that that they didn't like. Make sure they know about thawed mice. Make sure your parents know about frozen thawed mice because they're just as healthy as live. See you guys next Monday. Bye. Cut.